Today at ShopDap.com, we're gonna be going over sway bars on a Mark 7 GTI. Okay, so before we get into installing this sway bar on this vehicle, let's talk about what sway bars do. Sway bars are something that prevent the vehicle from having hard body roll, meaning when the, the complete of the body shifts to one side during cornering. This would keep the vehicle more symmetrical because it attaches to one side of the suspension and the other. So when you compress one side or the other, it keeps the other side similarly symmetrical and keeping the vehicle more flat during turning. Vehicles like this would have one on the front and the rear from the factory. Upgrading one to one like this would be a stiffer and or thicker sway bar, which would prevent even more body roll than the factory ones. Oftentimes something to understand that because vehicles like this are made for just average drivers, oftentimes you will sacrifice handling for comfort. So something like this, when you install an upgraded rear sway bar, you're going to get maybe a slightly stiffer ride in the rear, uh, which is why H&R actually offers two different versions for this vehicle of rear sway bars, a 24 millimeter and a 26 millimeter. So depending on what you're trying to accomplish, you may want to choose whichever one makes the most sense for you. A rear sway bar is something that you would consider whether you were installing on a vehicle with a factory suspension, you just want to get a little better handling, or if you have springs and you want to get even additional handling or coilovers as well, all of those vehicles are going to see benefits from a sway bar. And because the rear sway bar in these cars, is actually so easy to install. It's something that is a, a reasonable DIY for average people. Now the front sway bar is something that you can consider and it's something that would give you a benefit of an improved handling, but because you have to drop the subframe in the vehicle, it's not really a DIY for most people. So I'll put a link to both rear sway bars as well as the front ones for Mark 7 models uh, in the description where you can check that out. And with that said, let's get into our DIY. Okay, so here we are in the rear of the vehicle and we have our rear control arms here and right here and here are the sway bar end link mounting points. Now you have a link that goes up here and attaches to the sway bar, which wraps across here and is bolted to the body right here. And so this is going to be what we're removing. This is gonna vary a little bit because this is a different exhaust than what would come from the factory, but the install is gonna be pretty much very much the same without any requirements for any major changes on this particular vehicle. Uh, just unbolt and then remove. So let's go ahead and do that. Now that we're removing these, uh, these screws for the end links, they're two 13 millimeters, one wrench, one ratchet, and I throw them in our magnetic tray. Now that one's out and we're gonna remove our other one. And he's getting hung up here, so I'm just gonna turn them out. Even though they're not threaded into anything, the tension is making this screw hang up. So instead of being able to pull it straight out, you gotta kind of back it out like this. Now the end links are removed from the control arms. We're gonna go ahead and remove these parts that clamp it to the body of the vehicle and they use a 10 millimeter triple square. So let's get a better shot at that. Right here we have the clamps that hold the sway bar to the body of the vehicle. Here are the bolts, one here and one up top that actually mount it to the vehicle itself. They are 10 millimeter triple squares. If you're not familiar with what triple squares are, we will have a link to them in the description where you can get triple squares for this job if you need them. And we're gonna go ahead and take these out. Now we're on the driver's side of the vehicle. And again, same clamp has to come off here. Start at the top. And remove these bolts. Now as you take your last mounting bolt out, you may want to just make sure that this thing isn't gonna fall on your head because there's not really anything necessarily holding it in place. So we're gonna swing that out of the way. Because our sway bar is now unbolted, we should be able to pull it out of the way. So what we're gonna do is it's kind of hooked onto the control arms here and here with the end links. So we're gonna kind of flip them up and then rotate it kind of down. 
and we should be able to get everything cleared. So just something to take note of here, these links here are, you can rotate them. And so rotating them kind of into the, the sway bar itself makes it easier to kind of rock it out of the place. That way they're not hanging up on anything. As you can see here, we have our two sway bars side by side. Here we have the H and R one. This is a 24 millimeter. Here's the original one. This you can see is larger than the other one. And then if you stepped up to a 26 millimeter, it would be even larger. So we didn't really go with the 20, 24 for any particular reason. Just uh, this is the one we happen to be showing you on. And so we're gonna remove these clamps that hold the, the, the bushings on and swap them over. And so what seems to work the best on these is to kind of apply a little bit of pressure, grab a screwdriver and stick it into where it meets the bushing and you can kind of rock it out of place there and slowly work this clamp off. And now we can swap these onto our other sway bar. Now you may want to actually do put some lubrication on here just to prevent two things. One, noise. And then the other thing would be uh, making it easier to get this actually on to the new bushing. Okay, so now we're going to swap our end links over from the old sway bar to the new sway bar, and it has a 16 millimeter nut on there. Now, we're gonna go ahead and crack that loose. And what I've found is these are actually pretty tough, and you might consider cracking these loose before you take the bar out of the car, if that's possible. And again, uh, you do need triple squares because the joint of this actually has a triple square in it, so you're gonna need a 16 millimeter wrench. And then our smallest bit included with the triple square set we have is fortunately included there. And then all we're gonna do is use the triple square to hold it and then loosen it with the 16. If you had air or something like that, you might be able to zing this off without uh, these triple squares, but otherwise this is pretty much what you would need to do for this. And that's off and you repeat the same process for the other side. Now we can swap our links onto our new sway bar and just get them and put in place and then snugged up as much as possible until it starts to spin on you. And then repeat that reverse process that you did for tightening. You are gonna need to hold just like you did before. Now that those are all tight, we can throw this back in the car. Now much like you had to rotate it out last time, you're gonna have to rotate it in this time and move these links out of the way. I would start on the driver's side, at least on this vehicle, because of the way this exhaust is set up. And then get it in, rotate it in, and up. Now you can see we're kind of hanging in place. And now what I'm gonna do is swing these links into where they belong too. 
Now that we have the sway bar in place, we have to get the end links in place. What This is actually what appears to be probably the most challenging part of this job, just because the way these end links fit into this control arm here. And so what, what I would suggest you do is get the control arm, swing the end link in towards the fatter part of it, get it down as much as possible. And you can take like a screwdriver and kind of pry the link down. And then there's this hole here which you can take another smaller screwdriver and pry the link forward. And then this will allow you to kind of swing everything in place. As you can see here, it's still kind of crooked in the housing here, but what I'm gonna do is get it worked in place with this screwdriver. And once I can get, once I can get this hole opened up here, right there, I can just get this in place and get that all set to actually have the bolt go through it. Once you have that in, we can throw our hardware in place just to make sure your bolt clears, but that shouldn't be a problem. And we just thread that guy on there and do the same for the other side. Now we're gonna take care of installing the bolts into these clasps for the sway bar itself. And what I would recommend is you just thread them all four in before you even tighten any of them down. Because if you tighten too much, too many of them down uh, prematurely, you may have a tough time getting the other ones in. So make sure you get them threaded clean. That's a really important part of this because there's a little bit of tension in all this stuff. And so you wanna make sure you thread everything in cleanly because if you start tightening like crazy uh, before you have a clean thread, you could end up stripping something. Now that we have all the bolts for the clamps threaded in, we can go ahead and tighten them down. And what I would advise doing is tighten them alternating because if the clamp, you're not gonna get it seated all the way onto the bushing uh, the first time when you're installing it. So this is gonna kind of seat it down. So I'll kind of alternate sides as you go down to ensure that nothing gets too sideways while you're tightening things. And we're gonna do the same thing for the opposite side. Now that we got those clamps tightened in place, we're gonna remove our magnetic tray, tighten down our 13s right here, and then we're ready for a ride. Thank you so much for watching our how to install a Mark 7 GTI rear sway bar video. Remember, purchases for parts like this or any others help support videos just like this one. If you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more like it.